Today we're covering section 3.8 in the book, which is entitled the HL Postulate. This is our fourth method to prove triangles congruent, but it comes with a bit of a stipulation. We cannot use it for every single triangle. The HL Postulate says, in two right triangles, and there's our little stipulation, we have to have right triangles, if the hypotenuses, that's the side across on the right angle, and that's the H part of HL, and a pair of corresponding legs, that's the L, these are the, the sides that are not the hypotenuse, are congruent, then the triangles are congruent. So just like SSS, SAS, and ASA, this is a method that we're going to use to prove triangles congruent. Unlike those other three methods, we don't need three pairs of things congruent. What we actually need are two pairs of sides congruent and to know that we have a right triangle. So technically, we do still need three pieces of information. The hypotenuses are congruent, the legs are congruent, and that you have a right angle. So let's do an example. This will be our only example today because kind of uh, summarizes what we're doing. We are given that BR is perpendicular to UN, and I also know that BU is congruent to BN. And what I'm trying to show is that the triangle BRU is congruent to the triangle BRN. In order to do this, I have to take a look at my two givens. I've got the one marked off already, the BU congruent to BN. And then the other given is that BR is perpendicular to UN. So that should be a red flag right there, that if I have perpendicular, then I'm going to have right angles where BR intersects UN. And that's at angle, or point R, so angle BRU and angle BRN are right angles. My reason for that is from the given information that I had perpendicular, and that forms right angles. Normally, in a proof, if I said in a, that I had uh, right angles, my next step would be to say they're congruent. But in the HL postulate, I don't actually need to do that. If I want to say that BRU is congruent to BRN because all right angles are congruent, I can do that. It's not incorrect. It, it's fine. It's not necessary in the proof, though. Because all you need to do is you need to show that the hypotenuses are congruent, and I have that right here. Those are my two hypotenuses. And a pair of legs that are the same. And uh, the fact that you have right angles, which we have the right angles. So the next thing I need is I need to see if I can find a pair of legs that are congruent. And I have them right here. BR is congruent to itself. And that's the reflexive property. In step four, I'm there to prove the triangles are congruent. So I'm trying to show that the triangle BRU is congruent to triangle BRN. I had a right triangle because of those right angles. I had the hypotenuse is congruent, and I got the legs congruent. So that is the HL postulate. We're going to abbreviate it HL. If I needed to, if I went ahead and said, um, maybe I wanted to show that angle UBR and angle NBR were congruent, I could do that using CPCTC. So just like we did before with side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, if we needed to go further, our next statement would be whatever we needed to say and our reason would be CPCTC. So nothing's really changed with HL. It's just a fourth method that works for a special case. And the special case is when we have right triangles.